Hello Mike Irish Football Fan TV, this is our match preview as Bulgaria take on the Republic of Ireland in Sofia tomorrow night. Gary Spain is with us and he's actually over in Sofia at the moment. Gary, what's the general kind of feel around the area? I know you're out this morning getting a look around the place. So, the, I haven't seen anybody else uh, from Ireland the Sofia is a very pleasant city. It's a lot, It's it's changed uh, a lot from the people who may remember Eastern Europe from the seventies and eighties. I know we had a lot of fans here in two thousand and nine, but even since since it's become a lot more modern. There's a real cafe culture here. Uh, a big feature of the city at the moment is anti-government protests. So I I was quite careful to avoid them, but I just stood in the periphery and watched for a, a few seconds. But there are daily protests against the current government, very peaceful, I should add. Um, but there's no real uh, vibe. You wouldn't know there's a big match on tomorrow. I did get the local sports paper. It's 24 pages, 19 of them on football. But there's only one covering the game. So a lot of, a lot of focus is on their clubs in Europe, the European draw, and a lot of focus on, on foreign football. But um, I'm, I'm imagining tomorrow's paper will have more focus on the game. Yeah, well, I'm actually just out of the... There was two press conferences this morning via Zoom with Jeff Hendrick and Stephen Kenny. Now, he's come out and said that all the players are fifth for tomorrow night, which is a huge boost. Do you think if players have come into the squad previously and not getting a run uh, or gotten injured, players like Shane Long and something like that, now, for the first time in a long time, maybe two years... Uh, he's fit to play if if he's need if he's called upon, which is a huge boost. Um, I actually went with him in my starting eleven show, so, uh, my 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 starting eleven basically pick. And you know the fact that he has all the players available that travelled is a huge boost for tomorrow's game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a big boost for me as well as James McCarthy, who I think is going to play a key role under Stephen Kenny. And uh, he was a doubt for the game, so it's good to see him fit. Uh, it'll be interesting to see because Stephen likes to play with one one big, mobile, strong centre forward. And yeah, Shane Shane can play that role. Um, I, I wonder will he look at Adam Eder though? Um, it'll be interesting to see who he starts. Yeah, well, obviously, I'd like to see Eder come off the bench. You know, with a, with a half an hour to go, it'd be brilliant. Um, with Connolly. On one side, and you had um, Matt Doherty on the other. That's what that's what I went with anyway. But like from a Bulgarian point of view, like I'm just gonna go through um, some of their stats. You know, they they played eight in the qualifying for the Euros. I mean, they won one, they drew three, they lost four, and um, they scored six goals in the eight games. Um, I mean, suppose the passing accuracy, seventy seven percent, possession based forty three percent. Um, so then when they they had 17 yellow cards, uh, con committed 98 fouls, and then um, fouls suffered were 111. But then you go into their results. They drew 1-1 with Montenegro in their first game. Kos Kosovo won all as well, away. Uh, then Czech Republic, they got beaten 2-1. Then Kosovo beat them 3-2 at home. England beat them 4-0. Montenegro uh, drew 0-0. Then it was 6-0 by England. But then they won one nil against the Czech Republic. Now they're in a situ situation like us where they're in a playoff. They have to play Hungary, and that's on the eighth of October. Um, but obviously we've played them as well in that time, and we beat them comfortably three nil. Jack Burns' debut. Um, you know, a lot of new faces played that night. We were basically playing with our B team, I think, and we beat them three nil. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was three one. It was a, a dead game to, to many extent. It was. It was a B team, as you say. It was first goals for James Collins for for Kevin Long, and uh, for Alan Brown actually. I think with three players got the first goals for their country that night. I don't know if you can read that much into the game. I don't know how different the Bulgarian starting eleven will be uh, a year on. Um, it, it was a friendly. It was a warm up. I, the result that impressed me is obviously that one win you talked about, the win over the Czech Republic. Uh, but it was in a dead rubber of a game as well. And I imagine they will have one eye on the playoffs. Uh, they play Hungary, as you said. They've been quite fortunate, actually. They've 
well, I suppose they'd earned their, their home semi-final, but they've a, a home final as well. It's fortunate in the draw that way. Um, it's hard to know what to expect. I, I had a look at the squad, and frankly, I, I don't recognise any of the names in it. There's a player with Michelin in, in Denmark, the players in Ukraine and Croatia, but it's largely a home-based squad, and none of the names stand out for me, so it's, it's a bit of an unknown I do know Stephen Kenny and Damien Duff spend a lot of time uh, poring over videos and will be uh, trying to figure out the key players and what system they play. Yeah, well, I do think, you know, Jeff Hendrick did actually come out today. He, he said that he expects to beat them and we should beat them. He actually said that in a in a press conference. I don't know if that's going to be feel for them to think. But um, I suppose in news, like we have a lot of positivity coming into this camp. You look at the moves, and Shane Duffy's completed a long move to Celtic today. We've had Matt Doherty make a huge move to Spurs, great move for him. And then you obviously have Jeff going to Newcastle. So we're starting to see, you know, a lot of positive news for our te- for our players. And I think a couple of good games here could really propel them for their season going forward. You know, I think a couple of good results for Ireland here could really make the mark for them, for their clubs when they go back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're still in pre-season. Uh, well, uh, Tottenham and uh, Newcastle are still in pre-season. Appreciate Celtic, although Shane hasn't joined up with the squad yet. They've already got a few games under their belt. So I, I, the key thing for me is that they they play regular football because we we need our starting eleven and our squad playing week, week in, week out at the highest level possible. So, uh, obviously, Matt Doherty was a regular with Wolves. Uh, I expect him to be a regular at Tottenham as well. Uh, it's not too often with the so-called big six clubs in England that we, we have too many players starting with them. So, Matt will be the, the first for a while. Um, so, Shane should start in Celtic. He should get a chance to play in Europe as well, which will be good. Matt will be playing in the Europa League with Tottenham. and. Uh, It'll be good to see Jeff playing week in, week out with uh, with Newcastle. Yeah, Stephen also touched earlier that uh, he probably's not going to go with a three at the back. He hasn't had enough time to play with a three at the back with wing back, so it'll be a back four this time around. He also spoke about uh, John Egan and Shane Duffy being a great centre half pairing. So it looks as though they're na- they'll be nailed on to to start the game, the two of them together, and it'll probably be his defensive partnership going forward. I know Duffy and Kyo had been such a good partnership together. So I don't think that's anything um, out of the ordinary. I think that's fairly standard. I, uh, he spoke about having three brilliant fullbacks with Ender, Seamus and Matt. So I, I, I think he's going to stick with the same back four. I think he'll fit Doherty somewhere else in there. Maybe it's up on the right wing. I don't know. But from the sounds of things, from what he said earlier on, this is only 40 minutes ago, he did sound like he was going to stick with the... Seamus at the back with uh, John Egan, Shane Duffy, Enda Stevens, and of course Darren Randolph in goal. So he has all he has a settled team there. If you look at like a defence, that is a pretty much settled defence. That's the same team that started against. Uh, oh, sorry, Matt Doherty played uh, in the game against Denmark and obviously scored. But it is a pretty That's settled team. Right? Shame it. Shame yeah, that was because Seamus was suspended. Yeah, yeah. But I think. Like either or, if you had either of them in, I don't think anyone would be too too uh, angry whether you had Seamus or Matt in there. I don't think anyone would be too angry. I think people would be maybe angry that Matt Doherty isn't starting. But if he's in the team as well, I don't think people will complain. Yeah, I mean, obviously Darren will be in goal and I think three of the back four are nailed on. I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, it is the big question whether Seamus or Matt will start. Uh, I I was under the impression, uh, prior to you saying about the recent press conference, uh, I thought he would actually start with Matt Doherty. I was reading some of the newspaper reports from back home online, and they did seem to be indicating that they expected Matt Doherty to start at right full. Uh, I'm not sure how he's going to shoehorn him in. I know you had him as part of a front three, but... Um, I know he plays the wing-back role in Wolves, but I'm not sure whether a right winger really fits him in. I know Mick had struggled to to, to get the two of them in the same team. So it will be it will be interesting if he's not... He's obviously not going with a back five. 
uh, or t- with three at the back, three centre backs. So it will be interesting to see um, which one he'll choose. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing. I I wouldn't actually be upset if if he just look. Obviously, one of them has to play, and as he said before, we're spoiled for choice at right back with you know Seamus, Matt, Darrow, Shea, and Cyrus Christie. They're all good right backs. I know that I know Matt and Seamus are the two best, but they're all good right backs of their own right and have the flexibility to probably go into the centre of the fence. I know Seamus would and Darrow would. But um, he didn't really mention anything about the midfield or, or up front. He did speak about Adamida, and he did say how Adamida had been, you know, he liked everything about him, and he liked his approach. He's a hard-working young lad. He also spoke about how the whole squad, their intensity levels, and everybody came in and trained and trained hard and really put themselves about. And he just... He he just seems delighted with the squad he's got. He said the, they played a couple of elevens v elevens, and he just feels like the whole, either both eleven are both competitive. So it it really is up for debate what the rest of the team will be. You know, you if for the first time in a long time you couldn't really pick a, an Irish team with the knowledge of going. He's definitely nailed on, bar the players that we mentioned. You know, the the back three, I suppose, in a sense, and obviously the goalkeeper. We're stuck for right back. I mean, if you're going on form. You'd have to say that Matt Doherty, after his game against Denmark and the goal he scored, has the shirt for now. But the fact that he's brought in Seamus as his captain, um, also, then you're kind of looking going, well, he can't drop his captain. So what way is it going to happen? And that's why I think he will go with Doherty somewhere else on the pitch. I don't see him as a centre mid, though. So I can only see him in one other position, and that's to the right of this striker. And that allows... You, you, you've said before, you know, with Mick, I don't think it would make we had the same midfielders that we have at our disposal now. You've got Malumbi and James McCarthy who will get in and around and they'll cover those spaces that the fullbacks can get up if they need to. So I think that would probably give Matt more license to stay forward and not have any defensive um, responsibilities. And it allows him then to just focus solely on attacking. Um, and then you have Jeff Hendrick. I'd, I'd, I'd presume Jeff Hendrick will start as a, as a number 10 kind of midfielder because he's already said he's not a deep line mid player but if you had Malumbi and, and McCarthy this is just me you know I, he hasn't said anything about them but he might even go with Harry Arthur but even if you have McCarthy and Arthur covering those spaces it does allow either the fullbacks um, to get forward or it allows the strikers to stay further up the pitch therefore allowing someone like Doherty to have the, the run at the space but then again you got to remember he has players like Robbie Brady and Callum Robinson, who can fill in there too. So I actually, I'm excited regardless of what happens. I'm excited to see what team he picks. And I'm excited because I see the depth then that's on the bench that can come off with an hour to go, or half an hour to go on the hour mark. And then maybe run at Bulgaria. I'm, you know, I could see this game finishing th- maybe 3-0 to us. Hopefully. Oh, <laughs> I wish I shared your optimism, Paul. But anyway, I'll come on to that. Um, midfield, I agree. I think Jeff Hendrick will start. I'm I'm expecting James McCarthy to start. To I expect James to anchor the midfield. Uh, Stephen does like to play four three three, and that's kind of what I'm expecting. I think you're expecting the same. Uh, the other midfield spot is probably it's an interesting one. Uh, Jay Malumbi is is a good shout. I'm just thinking, you know, the way set pieces have just become so important in the modern game. Will Will Stephen go with a set piece specialist? And if so, well, then are you talking about Robbie Brady or Conor Horahan? Um, would one of them get this? Would Would one of them be fitted into the team? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, I, I'm interested. I'm very interested to see the, the the starting eleven because I probably don't think I'll be able or anyone will be able to predict it. But I would expect Jeff Hendrick and James McCarthy to be in midfield. I think Aaron Connolly will probably play on on the left. Um, who's to play on the right? I'm not so sure about Matt Doherty. Would he try him up there? Um, but I I don't know. I mean. It, it will be interesting. As for the prediction, oh, uh, I don't think it's going to be that easy. I mean, we've actually, we've never won here. If you look back, to look back in the stats, I mean, Johnny Giles came here twice and was beaten twice. Uh, Jack Charlton came here and lost. Trap came here and earned a one-all draw. Um, 
we've never won here. Can we win? I, I really hope so. I, I think it's going to be it's going to be difficult. Um, maybe we could edge it, but I, I can't see anything being I can't see anything being that easy. Um, I, I think Trina has been very optimistic. Um, yeah, but I, you're, you're, you're going off you're going off past players. They've had brilliant players in the past. You know, they've had you know, Petrovs, Berbatovs, you know, these Stoichkovs, all these players back then. They don't have any of those players now. And if we can't go to Bulgaria and get a win or play, well I know Stephen would be playing to get a win but if we can't go here and get a win that that would be alarming considering we have to go to Slovakia next month and definitely get a result there before even looking to a playoff final so I think this would be something where we need to stamp a marker down and show what we're all about Yeah but remember we had top players in those days as well I mean the, the Johnny Giles himself, Steve Highway Don Givens, Frank Stapleton um, we we've come here with Liam Brady. We've come here with some of our best players of all time. And now, yeah, they've 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 had better players in the past. I don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a golden era for football in Bulgaria by any means. But these guys are no mugs either. And uh, I don't think it's going to be that easy. I, I I'm not reading too much into last year's friendly. Yeah, if the game was in Dublin, I I'd fancy us. Um, it's still you're going away from home in Eastern Europe. It, it's it's not a done deal that we can go to places like this and win. I really hope we do, and it would be great if we can. Um, but uh, well, t- time will tell. But I, I'm not convinced, and I certainly don't expect it to be easier. Uh, to be easy, and Slovakia. Well. It is a, a warm up for for next month. Slovakia will be even a tougher task, I believe. They're a, a better side than Bulgaria at the moment, and uh, the, the playoff semi final will be very tough. Well, there's only going to be two main factors here, and that's fitness because players are kind of still in pre season, but they weren't playing two weeks ago. They were just finished their season, so it wasn't that long ago or three weeks ago. Um, and then the second thing is this is the first time. We're playing a game without fans, an international game. So that'll be strange. But I think, again, you look at it, I think we should be favourites going into this game and we should be winning the game, I think. Not very often I'd say that either. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's not very often we go away from home in continental Europe and win games against reasonably decent opposition. I mean... Uh, and actually, Bulgaria probably have more experience of playing without fans. They, I think they beat the Czech Republic, was played behind closed doors as well. They, they've had to play a couple of games behind closed doors from UA for penalties, etc. As you say, it will be a new experience. Uh, well, at international level for our players, I appreciate they will have played in the, the Premier League or the, uh, the Championship behind closed doors. So it will be a strange one. Um I'm not convinced in international football that it's it's that easy to go away from home and win. Uh, we may be we may be slight favourites, but I I don't think the bookies have us at odds on or anything like that. And uh, I think it's going to be very difficult tomorrow night. And uh, I I don't I don't see an easy win. I think possibly a narrow win. Maybe I'm getting too excited with all the new players in the squad, but I, I look. If I, if I see someone like Aaron Connolly pop up with two goals or Adam Ealy get a goal, you know, and you're going to be buzzing with that. I think we're coming into a new wave of players now who carry that confidence and they'll carry Stephen Kenny's beliefs into the team as well. I, I just, look, as long as we get a win tomorrow and we play somewhat attractive football, something that, you know, whets the appetite, something that gets you, you know, hungry to see more of these players and doing well. You know people like Aaron Connolly are desperate to score goals and we haven't had enough strikers that have been like that. Adam Eda scores goals for fun um, when given the opportunity. So these players mixed in with the... I think it's a perfectly balanced squad in terms of you've got uh, experience and you've got youth in there. And, you know, Stephen's no fool. I don't think he'll throw a player in the deep end unless he knows that they're ready to come in and play. I look at someone like Adam Eda who's very calm and relaxed. Uh, he's played Premier League football. So I don't think he'll... I think he's ready for international football. You know, people talk about Troy Parrott and stuff like that. He barely kicked the ball. But Adam Eder, towards the end of the recent games, he was getting pulled into the team. 
you know, and he obviously he scored a hat trick in the FA Cup tr season. So he's shown at times he can do it. Whereas Troy, I don't think, and I know Troy's not in the squad anymore, but I'm just saying Troy hasn't really done much for Spurs and was kind of doing stuff at underage level that kind of built him up a bit. Where I think Adam Eda, this season, you'll see the best of him, and I think this could be just exactly what he needs at the right time. If he gets a goal here tomorrow night, that could set him off for the season then. And his international career with Ireland. Yeah, I mean, I, I, probably it's a good thing for us that Norwich have gone down to the championship because I'm hoping Adam is going to lead the line for them this season. Uh, yeah. I think also he's more of a Stephen Kenny style centre forward. And I, I, I look back because I, I was actually over in England at the under 17s a couple of years ago when Adam played as the number nine and Troy played off him. And as you said, Troy's out of the squad now. But I don't think Troy is going to, to lead the line as a centre forward in the Stephen Kenny mould. Whereas Adam is that kind of centre forward. So I wouldn't actually be surprised if he started even ahead of something like Shane Long, who, and maybe he'll bring Shane Long off the bench. Now, I know maybe it'll be Adam off the bench, as you predicted, with 20 minutes to go. Uh, Shane Long is someone I think is really effective coming off the bench, as he had been for Southampton a lot. Um, Adam is the kind of Stephen Kenny centre forward. He scores goals. He's big. He's mobile. Uh, if you look back to Dundalk in Europe, they had David McMillan when they were playing in the, the group stages of the Europa League. So um, it will be interesting to see how many of the, the, the so-called new players. Now, I appreciate Aaron Connolly was in the squad under Mick and, and started games. Um, so I, I do expect him to start. Jay Malumbi is the, the interesting one for me. Will he start? He was a key player for Stephen with the under-21s. I think we're going to see more of his under-21s uh, make the breakthrough, probably not tomorrow night, but I think we will see uh, the likes of, of Jason Knight, etc. could probably the, come yeah, through yeah. over the course of the... Yeah, I mean, they need to be playing club football regularly. So it could be a good thing for us that the Euros got postponed a year of COVID. That's if we can qualify. We have massive, obviously massive playoff next month and hopefully a final in November. Um, but we'll probably, I think, have a better squad in June 2021 than we would have had in June this year. Um, so it will be, it will be interesting to see. Uh, we have, we have seven at least, hopefully eight games in the next uh, three months. And I suspect the team and the squad that coming out of those ga eight games will probably be very different to the team and the squad that we're seeing tomorrow night. But time will tell. Well, he mentioned that. He, he said that, you know, we're on course to play a record amount of games and he needs to rotate the squad. So he said players that necessarily weren't called up for this squad this time around doesn't mean that they'll be ruled out for squads in the future, which I think when you look at someone like Michael Obafemi, who seemed obviously very disappointed that there is opportunities for him there. All he has to do is get his head down and play well for Southampton. Um, not that he hadn't been playing well, but if he just met, if he does so well that he just can't be ignored, that's what he has to do now. Someone like him, for example. Then you've got Jason Knight as well. You mentioned if one of our midfielders aren't up to the task, then... Jason can come in. Harry Arthur has a bad injury record. So, will he be in every squad? Probably not. He'd probably get injured. James McCarthy doesn't have the best uh, record either. You know, obviously, we would love to be wrapping him up with cotton, cotton wool, but if he's playing every week with Crystal Palace, who are a very physical side, he spends a lot of time going around, getting the ball, doing, doing what he does best, really. You know, breaking up play or whatever. There's talk of him being moved on as well. Um, a lot of clubs have shown interest in him. So, again, if we keep getting players moving to clubs, but it's a lot more positive than it was at the start of the window. We didn't know what the story with Shane Duffy was. He's a club signed up now. Matt Doherty's with Spurs, which I think is going to be a brilliant move for him. And then you've got Jeff at, at, at Newcastle, which he said was the perfect fit for him. So it's all positive. Um, we're going to wrap it up there, but I just want to get your final score prediction. I'm going to go with... I said 3-0 earlier. I'm going to say... I'm going to say 3-1 Ireland. Um, and... Aaron Connolly to get two and uh, Shane Long to get one. I hope you're right, Paul. I'm I'm not as optimistic and I, I'm going to go with maybe a safe prediction for an Irish game is another 1-1 draw. Oh, 
Goal scorer? Um, goal scorer. I'm actually going to go with Jeff Hendrick. Touche. Nice. I like it. So, All right. Well, I don't like the score line, but I, I like the goal score. Um, well, I hope right, you're well, right, right with this the score line. <laughs> yeah. Well, just before I let you go, so you've got uh, Stephen Kenny's press conference later. You're probably like the only person getting to go to that. Uh, and then obviously you're going to be at the match tomorrow. We've got loads. I've got. I've just done a reaction video on Shane Duffy. I have Stephen Kenny's. He just did a Zoom interview there with the media just before. I have to put that up. And then. Uh, Jeff Hendricks press conference there's lots of content if anyone's watching now it's going out on the page and Gary will be bringing more even later on and uh, probably tomorrow we're going to have a watch and I have to see what the rest of the lads are doing but stay tuned if that is the case we'll definitely let you guys know Gary so what's the, what's the plan for the rest of the day then just before I let you go so I'm going to enjoy, go out and enjoy the sights of, of Sofia for a couple of hours and as you say then head along to the, the pre-match press conferences in the stadium uh, this evening and I'll provide updates from there yeah alright car well enjoy the rest of the day it looks nice and sunny It's uh, you're not missing anything back here it's pissing rain and it's miserable outside so uh, yeah we'll chat to you later on thanks for joining us and uh, enjoy the trip I'll chat to you later on okay cheers Paul